Hello everyone, this is my first real attempt of getting my hands dirty with gene editing. And so for this experiment, what I did is I took a yeast plasmid, and a plasmid is basically just a disc-like segment of DNA. And what I wanted to do is genetically modify it um, to incorporate GFP. And GFP stands for green fluorescent protein. And so yes, you heard that correctly. Uh, I would want the plasmid, the yeast plasmid, to glow fluorescent green. And I'd like to disclose that uh, this experiment wasn't created by me. I actually used a basis off of Stanford Biome and the tutorial they made for their students to understand Benchling, which is this fantastic application in which you can visualize, but also edit plasmids, which is the reason I used it for, but also a multitude of other reasons like taking notes and expressing experiments. Um, and so now I'll just dive a little deeper into the experiment and uh, what was done. So the first thing I did is, like I said before, was find a yeast plasmid. And the template I use is something called PXP420. This is actually a little different from the template that uh, Stanford Biome used. And I decided to use this because it has a few different enzymes that would be easy to um, reincorporate when trying to use the GFP and trying to put that into the plasmid. The next thing that I did was I found a restriction site. And a restriction site is basically where new DNA can be added. And the one that I found is something called SAC1. Uh, and SAC1 is a single cut enzyme, meaning it can be removed by a single cut, which makes it a lot easier when trying to implement the GFP and all the other things I need to uh, express it because uh, it's only a single cut, so I don't have to look for several locations to actually remove the SAC1 enzyme. Uh, the next thing that I did was I added in a TEF1 promoter um, in the place of the SAC1 enzyme. Uh, and the promoter basically starts the transcription process of DNA uh, that's going to be expressed as mRNA. Uh, it allows for the SAC1 uh, to be changed to GM GFP. Uh, but we don't just have to add the TEF1 promoter because that only starts the transcription process. We also have to add in the COSAC sequence, uh, and this starts the translation process where um, uh, things can be synthesized as proteins. And then after that, we can finally add in the EGFP um, uh, mRNA. And so this is what allows the um, yeast to actually glow green, like I said before. After that, we need to stop the translation process. So we add in a stop codon after the mRNA. And this was quite simple to understand because it was only three nucleotides long. It was just simply a TGA after this. And then uh, Benchling is actually fantastic and they've got the corresponding uh, nucleotides for that as well. After that, we need to stop transcribing because we already stopped uh, translating uh, and so we add in the terminator sequence uh, and this stops the proteins uh, being expressed and this uh, uh, this uh, codon sequence was actually already seen in the plasmid and so it's called CYC1 and so I just re-implemented that after the um, the stop codon and uh, uh, right before the oxotrophic selection marker. And the oxotrophic selection marker that I use, uh, the Stanford Biome tutorial actually didn't give us one, is URA3. And I decided to use that because it's the most common one used. Uh, and you have to add in this selection marker because it allows for polymers to occur um, and to be able to be understood by the plasmid. Uh, and that's important because GFP is actually a polymer because it is a protein. And then they also asked to include two origin points, uh, which I already had by using the template that I used. So I think that was a smart decision to have as I didn't have to add in another one. Overall, it was a great experience using Benchling. And I managed to gather a lot of skills about using the application and how I can go about gene editing in a simple way. Uh, with future experiments, uh, I'd like to see myself moving away from tutorials uh, and really becoming more creative with how I can use this. Um, technology and gene editing, but overall it was a great experience trying to learn on um, using the Stanford Biome tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment below. Thank you.